In SQL Server, a function is a database object that allows you to encapsulate a set of SQL statements to perform a specific task and reuse them throughout your queries. Unlike with a SQL view, functions can accept input parameters and return a value. We'll explore some of the most commonly used built-in functions in SQL Server like date and time functions, string functions, mathematical functions, and aggregate functions. Of course, You'll learn how to create your own user-defined functions so that your database systems can benefit from code reusability, flexibility, and performance. Hi, this is Joe Edgo, and welcome to Lesson 10 on Designing Database Solutions with Microsoft SQL Server 2022. To see the list of all available functions in your SQL Server database, expand the Programmability folder, and then Functions, under the system functions, there are several categories. For example, here is the list of all the built-in aggregate functions like average, count, max, mean, standard deviation, and so on. Here is the list of functions that you can use when dealing with date and time, like date add, date diff, get date, and so on. And most often, you will be working with functions to manipulate strings. For example, the substring function accepts three input parameters. First is the expression to be evaluated. Second is the starting position of the character and the length of the characters to be returned. So to use it, you can include it in your query like this. Select substring and then the string I'll evaluate is joed go. I'll start from the first character j and returns four characters only. As a result, we got Joed. We can also use it to evaluate every row in our table. For example, we have six rows in our employees table, and I can use substring to evaluate all the first name to get only portion of it. Starting from the second character, taking only three characters long. I'll also include the first name field so that you'll see the difference. And here's what we get. You can also pass the return value of a function into another function. For example, the upper function accepts one parameter, the string to be evaluated, and returns the string in uppercase. Here, I can use the upper function to evaluate each of the three character name returned by this substring function. As a result, all the three character portion of the first names are capitalized. Many of these functions can easily be understood by its name. For example, the reverse function reverses the characters. And the len function counts how many numbers of characters a string has. Another useful functions that you'll use often in SQL Server are date and time functions. For example, the getDate function returns the current database system date and time in year, month, day, hour, minute, second, millisecond format. You can also use the date name function to return only the name of the month or the year. Or the day. Or the day of the week. We can also use some date and time functions to perform basic computations. The date diff function returns the difference between two dates. For example, we can use it to get the difference in days since the employee's birthday until today. So, for this employee born on December 25, 1990, he already lived 11,781 days. Of course, we can get the year difference instead of day. And this employee is already 33 years old. 
On the other hand, the date add function adds a time and date interval to a date and then returns that date. This query returns the date 99 days from today. Now, if I want to know what day it will be 99 days from today, I can simply use this return date as a parameter to the date name function like this. And it falls on Wednesday. There are also a couple of mathematical functions that you can use like the round function, which rounds a number to a specified number of decimal places. The rand function returns a completely random decimal number between 0 and 1. The square root function returns the square root of a number. And the square function returns the square of a number. But unlike with mathematical functions, aggregate functions work slightly different as it performs a calculation on a set of values and then returns a single value. Also, aggregate functions are often used with a group by clause of the select statement as you've seen in the previous lesson on SQL views. In our sample table, we have employees with different hourly rate and the count function counts the number of records returned by a select query. Note that null values are not counted. And then the AVG function returns the average value of the given set. The mean function returns the minimum value of the given set. And the max function returns the maximum value. And we have a total of six employees. The average rate is 1,333 per hour. The lowest rate is 100 per hour. And the highest rate is 2,350 per hour. There are so many built-in functions that you can use in SQL Server. And for this lesson, I can only show you some. For the complete list and discussion of all the built-in SQL Server functions, please check the Microsoft documentation. The link is provided in the description below. In SQL Server, you can also create your own functions that accept parameters, perform an action such as a complex calculation, and then return the result of that action as a value. This is called user-defined functions. Aside from code reusability, user-defined functions reduce the compilation cost of your Transact SQL code by caching the plans and then reusing them for repeated executions. This means that user-defined function doesn't need to be reparsed and reoptimized with each use resulting in a much faster execution times. To create a user-defined function, consider this example. Suppose we want to include in our query a formatted employee name field consisting of first name, a one-character middle initial, followed by a dot, and the last name. If this expression is expected to exist in your other queries, then it is better to place it in a separate code block for reusability. And to create a user-defined function, simply type create function and then followed by the name of the function. Say UDF format name. The UDF prefix stands for user-defined function is not required, but it is a good programming practice to put it to identify it easily. Then it has to be followed by an open and closed parenthesis. This is where your parameter should be defined. In this case, I want that when this function is called, it requires an employee ID to be passed in. And this is of type integer. Now, the return value of a function can either be a single scalar value or a result set. And for this first example, we'll create a function that returns a single scalar value the formatted employee name of type varchar. And if I have a table structure with a maximum of 50 characters for both first name and last name plus a middle initial, that is about 102 characters long. And then the body of the function can contain a series of transact SQL statements 
that return that single value. Inside the body, you must declare a variable that will hold the value to be returned. It has to be of the same type as specified here in the returns keyword. And then, followed by a tsql statement to assign the desired value for this variable. So, I'll simply copy and paste this query and use this full name variable to store the formatted employee name. Now, make sure to use the WHERE clause to retrieve only the specific records by employee ID. In here, I'll use the emp ID input value that was provided by the calling program. And finally, we return the expected value of type varchar. Please note the difference of the two return keywords. The first one is returns with s indicating that this function returns a single value of type varchar. And the second one is return without s which means this is the return value. I'll execute this to create the function. And to verify if the function already exists, Navigate to the database programmability folder, functions, scalar valued function. Here, you should see your newly created user defined function. To test our newly created function, I'll modify this previous query that we have and then replace this expression with a function call. Please note that when calling a user defined function, it is required to use the two part naming convention as in schema.object. So I'll type the default schema dbo.udf format name. And then I'll pass an input value of employee ID. And then when I execute this, it works exactly the same as before. But this new code is more organized. Now we can modify this function so that it can also be used with other tables that contains first name, middle name, and last name fields as well, like customers table, contact persons table, and so on. So instead of having the employee ID as an input value, let's change this to accept three input parameters. The first name, middle name, and last name. And then use these input values in our expression. Of course, we no longer need to include this from clause since we just want to format the name regardless of the table it came from. And I'll execute this to save the changes we made. And now, this function can be called by simply passing in three values. First name, middle name, and last name. And it should return a formatted name. Of course, the result is still the same. But the advantage now is that you can use it to pass any names from any table or even literal string values like this. A user-defined function can also return a table, and it is called table valued function. You can think of it as a parameterized version of view. This means that you can use table valued function just like you would use a regular table with an advantage of passing an input value. We can create it as either inline or multi-statement table valued functions. And for this topic, I'll highlight the inline. To create a function that returns table, we'll be using the same structure. Create function and then the name of the function. Say we want to create a function that returns a result set of all employees based on their birth month. I'll call this UDF employees birth month. And this function has one parameter, the birth month of type int. And then instead of a return data type, it returns a table. Then the as and the return keyword followed by the select statement here. There's no begin and end keywords. And so we want to select only the employee ID, the employee name, I'll use a function for this, the birthday, and the email address if we want to send a happy birthday email to all the employees for a specific month. Of course, we need to filter this result set based on their birth month. 
and then I'll execute this. And you can see all your table valued function in this folder here. So let's try it. Just like selecting records through any tables or views, I'll select everything from DBO UDF employee birth month and pass in 12. And we have two employees whose birth month falls on December. Let's try it again. But this time, I'll pass in the current month based on my system date. And we only have one for this month of March. So in this lesson, you've learned about SQL Server built-in functions and how to create your own user-defined functions that returns either a scalar value or a table. I hope you've learned something of value here, because up next, we'll discuss stored procedures. And to help this channel, please click the like and subscribe button for more video lectures just like this. Again, thank you very much for watching. This is Joe Edgo, and hope to see you again in our next lesson.